In this video, I'm going to talk about um, agar petri dishes and bacterial growth on them um, and sort of what that looks like and how we use petri dishes and how we store them and what happens on the surface of them. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, growth medium. So we probably, you've probably seen this in lecture already, but growth medium um, Growth medium is a solution in water that has all the nutrients the bacteria or fungus or whatever will need to grow. So carbon source, energy source, nitrogen source, phosphorus source, um, all the vitamins and amino acids it might need, whatever it needs is in the growth medium. And so we have two options for growth medium. We can have broth, and that's just the growth medium in water, or we could have... Um, solid media. And solid media is just broth with agar added to it. And agar is a carbohydrate. When you heat it up, it dissolves in water, and then when it cools down again, it solidifies the water. So it turns the water into a solid object. Um, and so there's no difference between these in terms of the dissolved chemicals except the agar carbohydrate itself. And the cool thing here is that um, most microorganisms cannot eat agar. So it is a carbohydrate that is not available to the cells as a source of any nutrient. So they don't damage it. So it just stays there and keeps the, the, the medium solid. So um, what does that look like? Well, let's imagine we have um, a table. So you're looking at um, a tabletop. And you, you're crouching down, so you're at the level of the tabletop. And you're looking at this. And you're going to look at a Petri dish, or a Petri plate is what we, what we usually call them. It has two parts. It's got a bottom. And this is where we pour in um, we pour in the growth media that then solidifies. So this is the medium with agar in it. And then there is a lid that goes on top. So that's the lid. This is the bottom. So we, some people would call this the top whatever, it's a lid. And the idea here is that the cells are going to grow on the surface. So they're going to grow on the surface of the agar. And that's cool because we can manipulate them with tools. We can reach them because they're on the surface. And what the lid does is prevent dust from falling down onto the plate. So this will only have growth if we put it there. So this is like Pester's swan necked flask because um, air can get in. So these cells growing in here have access to air and their waste gases can get out. Um, but there will never be any growth unless we put cells in there. So, okay, cool. So, what, um, how do cells grow on there? Let's um, sort of zoom in on this. So, I don't know. This will not be to scale, but let's just imagine we have um, an agar surface here, growth medium, full of the nutrients that the bacteria need, plus agar that solidified it. And this is the bottom of a petri dish, so it's like a tub that this liquid is in until it solidifies. And we put a cell, one single cell, on that auger. If you put one cell here, what it's going to do is it's going to get whatever um, nutrient molecules are in this, the water right around here. I mean, it's solidified, but it's still water. Whatever nutrients are right here, the cell is going to be able to get them. And it's going to divide and make a daughter cell. And both of them are going to divide again until there are four cells. 
and all of them are going to use whatever molecules they can that are right here. And to whatever extent they can, they're going to keep dividing, making more and more cells, until you have basically a pile of cells that is visible to the naked eye. So they go from being individual bacterial cells you can't see to a pile so big you can see it. Um, and what, what happens eventually is these are so active in growing, they deplete the nutrients from around here and eventually they stop and they can't divide anymore. And that becomes a colony. So this is a colony, yeah, a bacterial colony. You can get a fungal colony or a protist colony. Just a colony on the surface of the agar growth medium. Um, you'll notice that I drew this colony as orange. Well, different bacteria that have different pigments in them might be different colors. And you'd only see that once there are so many of them that they become visible. So you might get... I've never seen a blue colony, but I have seen orange, red, yellow, um, yellow colonies. Um, the other thing is the shape of colonies can be different. Some of them are very flat. Some of them are, are really big piles, like half a centimeter tall. Most of them are in between. Most of them would be more like, like this. And that's what we call colony morphology. It turns out that by looking at the shape of a bacterial colony, you can usually learn a little bit more about it than you could by looking at individual cells under the microscope. Um, under the microscope, you just can't ever see any detail for bacteria. They're just too small for even a very nice light microscope. Um, so you, we can see them, we can tell what shape they are, but that's really about all we can do. But a bacterial colony could have a lot of different characteristics. It could be shiny, it could be rough, it could be um, a dome shape, it could be flat, it could be orange or purple, and all those different things kind of tell you what sorts of cells you're working with. And with that, that's um, enough for this video. So um, hopefully you have a sense of what um, growth medium is and that we can solidify it with agar and that a petri dish or a petri plate has two plastic parts um, and one of them is a tub that holds the agar until it solidifies the other pre prevents dust from falling onto the surface of the agar so that the only microorganisms that grow are the ones we put there and um, that's enough so i will see you at the next video